What's up, everybody? My name is Colin Sheen. Welcome back to Trust the Prophets YouTube page. This is Capping the Card, the Assiniboia Downs edition from Monday night, July 31st. I have big shoes to fill with the departure of Matt DeSantis on to bigger and better things. I know he was awesome on this show at providing a top pick and a value pick. I will follow that same format, and hopefully I will have as much success as he did as we try to find... Value for your stable dual players, top picks for your paramutual players, and also prepare you. Don't forget we have our live Monday night show at 8 o'clock. I'll be the host for a majority of those shows, so I hope you can stop by. But first, let's do Capping the Card for Monday, July 31st. Today's video is brought to you by Assiniboy Downs Gaming and Event Center. Be sure to tune into this channel live Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern for Monday Night Lights, hosted by Trust the Profits. That's right. That's your promo for Monday night show live at eight o'clock. We'll do a pre half hour uh, lead up to the first race, giving you some value plays for stable duel. We'll be joined by a host of uh, Sean Patrick Nolan, Jessica Tugwell, El Hombre, and uh, Brie Mott from stable duel. We will continue to keep that going. So we look forward to you joining us. The chat is super interactive and I hope you can join us. But first we're looking at Monday, July 31st, this is Capping the Card. We're looking at race one, a main claimer for 7,500, going six furlongs for three-year-olds and up. We have a field of six, including three horses dropping from the maiden special weight. That is the three valid defense, the five GB's turbo, and the six play, pay it forward. That's an angle I always like to pay attention to in these maiden claimers for, for uh, at all is horses dropping down from a maiden special weight level, obviously considered one of the biggest drops in horse racing. Only the four has been close to winning, but he's tried this level for a while. And so there's a little bit of that theory of, does the four like to win? Uh, 0 for 10 so far, and is close, or is he out there just kind of running along with his buddies? has some early speed, has displayed early speed up at Assiniboia Downs both last year and this year. This horse has strictly run at Assiniboia Downs and has finished fourth, uh, uh, finished second four times. Now, this horse number four, Amos Star, is seven to five on the morning line. And for me, that's a tough price to pay if you're a stable dual player for someone that just doesn't like to get there. And I don't see that huge turn um, turn of uh, anything changing that's going to make it any different has tried the main claimer 7500 ranks now for the last four races does have three seconds one of those was by a neck one of those was by a head um you know maybe you can take something out of that certainly running better than they were last year uh, the other horse dropping down is the six pay it forward who's only raced one time that was july 17th finishing sixth, but it was 19 lengths behind the first place winner on that day. I've landed on the three valid defense. And I know I'm supposed to pick a top pick and a value play, but in a field of six, I feel like my top pick is a pretty good value at six to one. Uh, the threes trained by Wendy Anderson has raced at the main special weight for 20,000 last four races and threw in throw in uh, a Buffalo Stakes 41K on September 26th up at Assiniboia Downs. That shows that they had confidence in this horse. Now, I know in six races, you see a lot of fifths there, including some losing by 13 lengths, 11 lengths. But I pay attention to those speed figures. And one thing that you want to notice there is that they are continuing to progress. Another progression in this race puts valid defense Rate in company with the other horses in this field. Now, going six furlongs, I also like to see that in the comment section on Valid Defense, this is a horse that finishes well. So, although the fifth place finishes are nothing to be, you know, that you want to see, does pass horses late. And three of those comments are finished well, even rally, rallied, and, and mild gain. Uh, and has faced a lot of situations where this horse has been very wide. So, Valid Defense. Is not only going to be my top pick, is also going to be my value play in the first race. Um, you also have a strong jockey trainer combination 
that is one to pay attention to. So that's where we'll go with race one for Monday, July 31st. On to race two. We have a claiming race for $3,000, non-winners of one for a year. It's for six furlongs, again, for three-year-olds and up. The number five, Drizzy, is who I'm going to go with on my top pick. This horse's success comes from sitting from off the pace. I think you have some early speed with the two and the four that's going to set up for the five to be able to uh, sit the trip that wants to sit. The concern obviously is I'm always concerned about eight year olds. Um, this horse did well coming from off the layoff, finishing third on May 30th and then finished fourth in the last two races up at Asina Boya Downs. This horse has raced 17 times at Asina Boya Downs and finished in the money 10 times. Now, I am relying on the Drizzy number five to get back to what it was doing last year. And last year, up at Assiniboia Downs, finished out the year with two victories, going five and a half furlongs. Those speed figures of 84 and 81 are nowhere near what he's been able to put up this year, uh, posting some 60s. And obviously, as an eight-year-old, you're concerned, can they get back? to what they were doing as a seven-year-old. But if it can get back with that back class, I think you have a shot here. I went back and forth with my value pick because I felt like you could go either with the one, the three, or the six. But you got to take a stand. I can't give you three value picks. Uh, rebounder was where I ended up landing. You have a trainer who's hitting at 40% in sprints, 38% in dirt starts. And I think the three races... This year for this number six have all shown improvement. And you know, you talk about it both from a two-year-old, three-year-old standpoint. You want to see progression until they don't progress anymore. Well, this horse who come in, came off the layoff, put up a 54, then a 65, and now is assigned a 72, just missing place last time out. The three was possible, but that horse was 11-year-old. I think the last race was good, but expecting the three to again uh, – Come back with that type of race is what scared me off a little bit, whereas you have this six rebounder with Siobhan Bellaboard, who's been just a little bit more consistent for me. So from a stable dose standpoint, I think the six rebounder is a great option at 12 to 1. Race three is another claiming event for 7,500 non-winners of two lifetime, going six furlongs again for three-year-old and up. Number one, All-Terrain Jane is a horse... For those of you that have joined us on the Monday Night Lights episodes that of our live stream, I like to give out a sleepy pick in either race or six or, or seven. Uh, we just like to have a little fun when you've been live for three hours, and I try to look at the horses in the paddock and decide who looks a little sleepy late at night. All-Terrain Jane was the first horse that I picked as a sleepy time pick, which is supposed to be a fade, who actually came in to win, and that was that event on June 26th. So All-Terrain Jane forever in the infamy of our Monday night live show. So going six furlongs here, you have a field of seven. My top pick ended up being number three, Sugar Daddy Jack. And what I like to do here is take a little look at the times that the horses have completed six furlongs in. Sugar Daddy Jack completed it in one, 13, and three. And over most of these horses... Aside from five, Shotgun One, who ends up being my value pick, I think that that time is going to be very competitive if, of course, they can repeat that. I also like uh, the fact that this horse has only tried this level of non-winners of two lifetime last out. You have horses here that have been trying that level for a while, such as the two Living Sky. He's tried, uh, you know, 18... Lifetime races, only one victory. The last eight have been at this level and hasn't been able to get the job done. So at three to one, that certainly gave me pause for concern. Um, but I like the fact that they've shown confidence in the number three, Sugar Daddy Jack, in the races that the horse has been entered for. Uh, starting off with the maiden special weights at 20K, tried those that level three times before dropping down to the maiden claimer for 7,500. Then they stepped him up to a $40,000 restricted race, came back last out in that claiming race and only lost by uh, a length and was able to sit off the pace and duel on the outside. So the two Sugar Daddy Jack is where I'm going to go for my 
value pick. I like the number five shotgun one with the Mario Bano by no aboard who's been hitting at 20% for uh, trainer Jared Brown, who's hitting at 22%. My graphic there is wrong. The trainer is Jared Brown on shotgun one. I like the progression in speed figure and you're taking a little bit of a shot here on a horse that broke his maiden last time out in the maiden claimer on July 17th was actually in some trouble bumping out of the break, but was very game on the outside. And I'm hoping uh, that if Jared Brown has this horse in good order, he's going to come back and a repeat of that last effort probably uh, is enough to get it done here for race three. I think that this horse has really been able to close well, and that is where my value pick is going to be number five shotgun one for race three. We flip it over to race four yet again, another claiming race for 5,500 for seven going seven furlongs four three year olds and up the second and third race on number six captive kitten. We're good drops back down to 55. This horse is eight years old. So what I mean by that is last year, this horse, uh, I'm sorry, this year, this horse's second and third races off the layoff were very good. Tried the claiming 7,500 level, finished sixth, eight lengths behind with Whitehall aboard. They drop him back down to 5,500. And my concern was that an eight-year-old who showed uh, some pretty strong figures, second and third off the layoff, is maybe not going to be able to repeat that fifth off the layoff. So we'll skip on Captive Kitten. And number two hasn't gotten back to uh, what is done last year, and that's House Limit. This horse is six to five with Chow aboard, trained by Elton Dickey, House Limit. Last year's races would very easily make this horse playable at six to five for me. However, this year in the optional claiming level of 15,000 and 10,000, there's just been too much inconsistency finishing 13 lengths behind finishing fifth last out. Uh, you have three horses, one, two, and three who have all been racing at that optional claimer, either 10,000 or $15,000 level. I'm going to decide to go with number one, looking high as my top pick takes a little bit of a cutback. Um, obviously, we've talked about what House Limit did last year. Looking High hasn't necessarily done what House Limit did last year, but I just like the consistency that I'm seeing a little bit better on this number one. You're getting some speed from the two, the four, and the five. Um, and with the one being consistent and also being able to run late, I think the one is going to be passing a lot of these tired horses. And I think that it's a good play for uh, stable duel. Number five is going to be my value play. And I think you could have gone a few different places here for your value play. I was very interested in the number four silver maker. This was an $800,000 purchase who last two races uh, were very competitive. Uh, Actually, two victories. Last out was a six-length victory at the claiming 3,000, then claiming 4,000 level. They step him up to the claiming 5,000 level. Here, you're just hoping that a horse that is three for six at the distance can either repeat or take another step forward. I'm then going to go with the five Heimelstein with Cumberbatch aboard, trained by Shelly Brown. I'm hoping that the four victories at seven furlongs, which is a tricky distance, Gives this horse an edge. Also, this horse won at 24 to 1 last year going wire to wire. Now, there's a little bit of a concern for me here that this horse absolutely needs the lead to be able to be successful as far as getting to the winner's circle. Um, but I don't know that there's any world beaters in here. Uh, you know, the two's obviously going to go. Um, I think the five, if it runs its race, is going to have a shot. Uh, as a value play here at 12 to one for race four. This is for Monday, July 31st at Assiniboia Downs. We go to race five. We have an optional claimer for 10,000, five and a half furlongs for three year olds and up. I decided to go with the two Kate's princess as my 
top pick. And we're going to do a little of that game where you got to draw a line through some of the poor performances on Kate's Princess. And that's how I got to her as my top pick. This horse has raced 17 times at Assiniboia Downs with seven victories, four seconds, and a third. You'll see a couple fifth, fourth, and sixth place finishes in the, in the past performances for Kate's Princess. But what I want you to do is pay attention to the post position that Kate's Princess had on those particular days, and that was the rail. Now, being number two, obviously you're just outside the rail. I think Kate's Princess is going to be able to show some early speed and get past my Noah. But those fourth, fifth, and sixth place finishes were all when Kate's Princess was on the rail. In fact, when she's been in the second post position, she's won her last two races at the optional claimer $10,000 level. So I think if you draw your line through those rail pass performances, you have a horse here that's just been absolutely consistent. And that's what I uh, am intrigued by, by number two. The number four is 0 for 3 on the derp and running on the synthetic. So I was able to toss hand carve number five in the deep. Fourth and fifth off the layoff last year were the best. Um, so possible that this horse comes back and runs a big race. I think the lab rat number six. Seven for 15 in the monies, moving up in class. There's some interest there. Della Vecchio, your eight to five morning line favorite, is a horse for the course at Assiniboia Downs, 29 times running over the surface with eight victories in six seconds uh, and shows some really speed. Can't fault you if you go there as well. You have a very competitive race here. But for my value pick, I'm going inside with the number one, my Noah. This horse has raced three times this year at Assiniboia Downs after being moved up from Oak Lawn being tr previously trained by Robertino Diodoro. Mike Taphorn is now your trainer with Badry aboard. Uh, connections that you certainly want to pay attention to up at Assiniboia Downs. And the last three races have been very competitive. Uh, June 21st running an allowance level where uh, got to the lead and ended up wearing down the rival on the outside. Uh, then went up to the optional claimer 10,000 for the last two races, actually last out, finished second to that previously really mentioned horse, Dele Vecchio, and finished well last time going six furlongs on July 17th. All three of those speed figures by a Brisnet standpoint were in the 80s, so you get consistency and you get a horse that has shown some ability. So the one, my Noah, will be my value play for race number Five. Race six, claiming 5,000 non-winners of two lifetime, going six furlongs for three-year-olds and up. You have a field of eight with your favorite nine to five, Asta La Vista, honey, a great name, being ridden by Antonia Whitehall, trained by Jerry Gore. No, this horse just raced on July 26th. So you get the quick turnaround for Asta La Vista, honey, and Gore, no, hitting at 31% with that angle certainly had me giving Asta La Vista a long look. You're getting a cutback, which I like, uh, has shown early speed at both a mile and seven furlongs. So cutting back to six furlongs is probably going to be advantageous for this horse who has tried this distance four times though, and has only finished in the money two times with two Thirds. You have three horses that are dropping down from the allowance level. It's not only Asta La Vista, baby, or Asta La Vista, honey, easy to say. It's also the five and the six, Love Hours and Sunspot. And I decided to go with the five Love Hours as my top pick as one of those horses dropping down from the allowance level to the claiming level. I went with Love Hours because of the consistency. Now, sure, you can say that that consistency was at maiden claiming level, which it was, which maybe is something you want to give pause to. However, I see continually improving speed figures. And I also, it's important to mention that Love R has actually won two races at the maiden claiming level. Now, sure, it was placed fifth through disqualification three back, but one that raced by six furlongs and then came back and wheeled it back with another victory. Uh, by five lengths on June 20th. They step them up to the allowance level, finished fifth, eight lengths behind, but in the stretch was in second place and was only four lengths behind. And I think in this field, which to me, you know, aside from the ones dropping down, uh, the number seven, you have a low percentage trainer and jockey. Um, 
And the number four Miami souvenir is that I'm just going to wait for that horse to beat me. It was high on her, her first time out here up in Assiniboia Downs when she was off at, I think she was like 16 to one morning line, went off at 10 or 11 to one. That's the race where she lost to Diane's wish. Um, hasn't shown much aside from a couple third places. And I'm going to let Miami souvenirs beat me. Love ours is where I go for my top pick. It is a big step up, but like I said, that second place in the stretch, only four lengths back in the last race is what gives me uh, the, the okay to give this horse the nod. Where's my value play? That's going to be number three, guaranteed delivery. This horse is just very consistent and always gives an honest effort. Has raced 17 times at Assiniboia Downs with nine times, and the money is two for five at the distance. And if you go back to last year, July 11th, August 8th, and August 30th, put together a three-race winning streak up at Assiniboia Downs in a very similar type of race, both claiming 62.50, going six furlongs. Um Two victories at that level, and also the maiden breaker and a maiden claiming for 5,000. Timothy Tarasenko aboard for Carl Anderson. Um, Carl Anderson hits a 29% in claiming races. I think this horse will be, you know, just off the early speed, which obviously you'll get from the one, um, and you'll probably see some early speed from that outside, number eight. And I'm hoping guaranteed delivery can sit off of those two and get back to what he was doing last year at this exact same level. Race number seven is claiming for 4,000, going a mile for three-year-olds and up. I found this race to be very competitive. And I've said that over a, quite a few of these races is that you have some competitive fields. I don't know that there's any easy singles here. There's obviously a couple in, that are dropping down from higher levels, but you have multiple in these races that makes it, you have to take a stand and in this last race, I decided to go with White Rose Spirit on top. The number five, and this horse is actually six to one. So you're getting a little bit of value play in my top pick. And then I also have Saturday Service at 10 to one for my value play. What I like about White Rose Spirit, this horse is trained and owned by Shelly Brown. Important to note, uh, get two strong efforts in the last two races, July 11th and July 18th. Little uh, two victories at the claiming 5,000 non winners of two level, then comes back and wins at the claiming 5,000 non winners of three level. A performance like last time going wired to uh, well, actually finished, I'm sorry, ended up finishing third in that last race, but showed that early speed. Um, I think what you get in there, at least from a speed figure standpoint, and also an advantage in this race of being early speed where there's a lot of horses that are not necessarily going to be competing with white rose spirit early, uh, has led me to number five, number three, Saturday service is dropping was racing last at the claiming 62 50 level has raced at this distance. 10 times has been in the money five times, including three victories. So, uh, I'm sorry, actually six for 10 at this distance. And you have another horse here that's coming back on short notice ran on July 26th and Jerry Gourneau. We talked about it earlier, although I didn't pick that horse. He was bringing back early last time. You have him hitting at 31% when he does that. Now that last race left a lot to be desired, losing by 10 lengths and finishing sixth dropped back and faded at the turn. Uh, they're actually stretching this horse out here, and I think at 10 to 1 with Antonio Whitehall aboard, getting a horse that's getting some class relief, uh, I don't think that that's a bad uh, horse for a value play. So that is your seven races for Monday, July 20, 31st at Assiniboy Downs. I can't believe the calendar is already flipping into August. Please join us Monday night live at 8 o'clock as we will bring you live handicapping. We'll watch the races together. We'll have guests in and on all night, and it's always a fun time. Until next time, I'm Colin Sheehan. This is Trust the Profits. Please like and subscribe.